and welcome to Lutherans Alive. This is the program that seeks to tell the stories of Lutheran Christians and our ministries here in southwestern Pennsylvania. And we do so joyfully, believing that God is doing wonderful things through us. We're very pleased to have two guests on the program today. We have Barbara Fry and Rosie Henriksen. Welcome, ladies, to the program today. Thank you. And you come here today uh, representing not only your congregations, uh, Barbara, uh, a member at uh, St. Paul's Swickley, and uh, Rosie, you're from Messiah Munholm. Correct. But you're here today representing the uh, Synod Women of the ELCA organization. Uh, and we have a significant anniversary to talk about, do we not? Can you say some things about this anniversary that's coming up? Sure. We are starting to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Women of the ELCA, and it will also be the ELCA, but we're primarily concerned with the Women of the ELCA. We have our convention, which is next week, uh, the 18th and 19th at Greensburg, and we are kicking off our anniversary celebrations that weekend, and our celebrations will continue till the year 2013 in May. They will finish then, and I guess then we'll go on to our next 25 years. But uh, we're having uh, a workshop to begin with in the afternoon of Friday the 18th, and Barb has prepared uh, a presentation, a slideshow of different things that um, we have done at conventions in the past 25 years. We have some pictures, we have Bible verses, banners. Banners. Yes, we've, in the past we used to have banners for, one for convention and one for retreat in the fall. But now we've been doing banners that maybe will last for three years. We're taking them from one triannual convention to another. And so, it was just a little too many to have. And so we've cut, narrowed it down and we have a few. And also, when we have retreats now, which are in the fall at Camp Lutherland, we I think it's been three years that we've been doing retreats with Northwestern Pennsylvania. It's a joint affair. So some of our banners were just mainly geared for Southwestern Pennsylvania. So. I thought, eh, maybe they might not want to see all of ours. We don't want to take over the whole thing. We can easily do that sometimes, and I try not to. And so we've kind of just kept the general banners and had those up because they do, oh, show your history, show what we've done, different themes. You do want to remember, okay? Because someday we're not going to be here and that will be someone else's thing. Oh, remember when we did this? And there are stories, oh, lots of stories, uh, with conventions, with retreats, even with board meetings. I've been involved with the women since it started in one way. I've had my breaks in between. You, you have to be. So uh, I was the second president. Deb Niederheiser was the first one, I was the second one. And there are so many things back then that it was an adjustment period because we had to learn to be really flexible because it was just forming. And if I have to say so, we in southwestern Pennsylvania, the women, are about one of the best organized groups. We seem to kick it off right away, and it worked, and we've kept with it. And it was just a great thing um, when you go to president's meetings. Well, I should say, when you used to go to president's meeting, if it was near a triennial time, you got to go to that city and see it. I had been to Chicago for one president's meeting, but I had been to um, St. Louis. And I went with Marty Rose, who happened to be the president in Northwestern Pennsylvania. And they wanted us there the night before, because we were going to start at 8 a.m. And I told Marty, I said, the only thing I want to do is go up in the arch. 
and we did. And after that, this was in March, and then we ended up going to a floating McDonald's, which <laughs> I've never been in a floating McDonald's. It was in March, kind of cold. And then we end up calling a taxi from a McDonald's to go back to the hotel. But he wouldn't take us back to the hotel. He dropped us off at Union Station, and we had a blast. We had a great time walking around in that. And finally, we did wear out <laughs> and went back to the hotel and started for president's meeting. So it was a very good experience um, being a president, being in charge. But it's also nice just to be a board member. You don't have quite as much responsibility. But right now on the board, I am the secretary, which I said I have been a board member, I have been vice president, I've been president. But boy, secretary is a lot of work too to get all this stuff together. And we've just completed, in fact, Barb and I were here today stapling our book for our convention for next week so that we have it all ready. You mentioned that history is very important and mm -hmm. I believe that to be true our history is very important in that it may be helpful for many of our viewers to know that here uh, in North America we Lutherans have been here for a while and there have been mergers mm -hmm. and divisions yeah. and then remergers and when we talk about 25 years the past 25 years, we are talking about the formation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, mm -hmm. the ELCA, and then subsequently, of course, with that, the women of the ELCA uh, organization, which as you say is very well organized, and, but women uh, in our Lutheran Church do have a long history of being very, very active mm -hmm. and doing many things, participating in many different ministries. Can you say some things about that, even prehistory, uh, even pre-1988? Uh, yes. Can you say some things about what well, women have done? We've done an awful lot of digging and reading and throwing out papers that we no longer need. Um, we ran across an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper that was done up like a family tree, and it went back to 1818 to the first, now that can't be the first Lutheran church, but the first maybe organized synods. And um, they were back with the Norwegians and Germans. And there, there was another group down here. Anyway, I did enlarge it and make it a bigger chart so everyone could see it. Um, so yes, it's kind of silly for us to be saying 25 years when it's hundreds of years, mm -hmm. because I'm sure, well, Katie Luther had everybody organized, I'm sure. And the women have always been the backbone of any church, so any organization. True. So that's part of our, our history that, yes, we, we know there, there were women before us. And going back to something she said, when we merged 25 years ago, I really feel we took the best of each of the women's groups mm -hmm. and made it part of ours. Wonderful. Yeah. Ladies, thanks so much for what you've shared so far. We're going to hear more uh, in just a little while. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back here on Lutherans Alive. Thanks for staying with us here on Lutherans Alive. We're talking with Barbara Fry and Rosie Hendrickson, uh, talking about the ministry of the women of the ELCA. And before the break, we were talking about how women have always uh, been a very important part of the church and have uh, contributed much to the life 
of our congregations and, as our, uh, and to our common life together. Um, in the last 25 years now in this current uh, incarnation of the, the women's organization, uh, how have things changed? Uh, you ladies have both been involved for a very long time. Uh, how, how have things evolved in the last uh, 25 years? How have you seen things change? Well, we don't do suppers as much as we used to. Um, but the women's group, uh, when they formed, I think it, three years after they formed, at the Washington, D.C. Triennial, um, a church-wide group decided that we should emphasize women and children in poverty. And then two years after that, mm -hmm. we in southwestern Pennsylvania decided we ought to have a focus each year for our giving. And um, so, so we formed Designated Outreach. And the different organizations come. They do not have to be religious or Lutheran. Mm -hmm. And they present their projects and their cause to us at our convention. And the women take a vote. And um, usually, whoever wins, the second one coming in, they come back the next year and then they get it. Um, but we have had some very interesting uh, outreach to work on. And our women love to give things from paper towels to socks. So we always have a list, a wish list. And then, of course, they're uh, allowed to give money. And so we've been able to give tons of products to these uh, organizations and lots of money and uh, right now we're doing Gwen's Girls from Pittsburgh and um, that's been completely different and we did Girls Hope in Baden that was interesting um, and uh, Rosie had mentioned previously about Pastor Scott Kuckemeister Hall um, with the Lutheran Campus Ministry and that really was a fun one because we got to pack Boo bags and bunny bags. Bunny bags. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we brought Dress candy up. and um, snacks and erasers and all kinds of things for the students uh, just before their exams. Mm -hmm. And we decorated the bags for Halloween or for Easter. And um, and he just, we had a video of him dressed up as he a bunny. Dressed up as a bunny at and Easter. And had a little red wagon with all these bags. And uh, somebody, somebody young had come up to me following the meeting where we had decided to do this and said she thought that was so silly. College students don't want it, that kind of thing. But then we had got this video from him and by golly they did. They did. They loved it. It was a great thing. We so. did. That we was, did him in two That was the funniest thing. Yes, that was the, yes, that was it. The rest seemed to be a little more serious, serious. Yeah. and that where they've had wish lists that have asked for things that we just cannot do but congregations will combine and bring things and we always tell the person that is representing and coming to the convention to please bring a station wagon a van a truck because you get tons of stuff believe me um, it's run amok from paper towels, paper plates. We've done diapers, toiletries, all types of things that we give for this. And they are astonished. We have had a few that have been so astonished. We have jam-packed into some vehicles <laughs> the things that they have asked for. And um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Glade Run and Zillianople ask for games and different things like this. And we really did. We jammed in all the things that they get at retreat and convention into their vehicles to fit it in. And so they have been very well pleased with the women and what we have given them. And we have been pleased with them that we can do what little bit. It may seem minor, but it helps them. And then there has been a monetary gift. Whatever the people send to us, we send off to the um, organization. They do get it. We don't keep it for our offerings. 
we pass it on. And we've had women that, um, oh, different workshops, different things like this. We've done Lutheran World Relief. We have done the kits, the health kits, um, the layettes, the uh, school kits. We have done quilts. We have had churches that have done quilts. And this has all been sent to Lutheran World Relief. Um, we've had different things that we've been asked to make and do and bring to triannual conventions. We do try to go to triennials as much as possible. Some of us that are, are not delegates. The past triannual, which is the whole church, was in Spokane, Washington this past July, uh, July of 2012 we went. And we were asked to bring some things or we sent things ahead. The one year they were making knitted hats and we had to send yarn and we had to send uh, some needles. We were given assignments and things like this so the women have done this and we have. We have one lady in our group that um, collects from the different women uh, lap robes and this, these go to the veterans here in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. She collects those and they are given there and she may take oh she may get 50 or 70 at convention and she'll take them on and pass them so the women not only have been generous to ourselves we've been generous to everyone else that we can as much as we can mm -hmm. and we know with um losing memberships losing churches uh, we're becoming older and there aren't as many younger people coming up that it can be a little bit harder to get as much financial support sometimes. And this is a big thing, which I know it is for any organization or even any church. But so many have been recipients of your love and care and the collections that you have, have made. Uh, and that type of outreach, that caring, for others that caring for neighbors in need has always been one of the hallmarks mm -hmm. of the, the ministry of our church women. And it is, uh, it is a blessing, and you have been a blessing for, for many years, and I have no reason to believe uh, that that will continue in some form uh, in the yes. years, in the years to come. It will. Yeah, it, it will indeed. Mm -hmm. It will indeed. Uh, other things that uh, have been a part of uh, your life together as women of the ELCA, um, Bible studies and um, learning, uh, growing together in faith. Uh, it seems to me that a lot of congregations uh, do have women's Bible studies, some with resources provided through the women of the mm -hmm. ELCA. Can you say some things about that? That's changing, yes. Uh, the church-wide office of women of the ELCA are still doing lots of programs, lots of programs. And you used to be able to call and order them. Sometimes there was shipping costs or, or a price for it. But that seems to be going away. We have to download, download everything. It. And uh, we have been trying to encourage our women. They've got to learn how to at least do email. They really, really do. And so I get up there every time I can and say, okay, how many are online now? And it does seem to be growing. I think the fear is lessening. Because when you look out over the group, most of them are older, and a lot of them just don't want to be bothered. But I think everybody is realizing we're going to have to learn to do this. So yes, there are a lot of things being provided. But right now, they're mostly online. It seems to be the, the way things are going. Yes. See, then you need to ask some of the younger women who know about computers, and draw them in, get them involved, and get say, hey, involved. will you download this for the group? Right. Yes. And get will them involved. you do this for That's me? That's right. We That's need 10-year-olds. Right. <laughs> they, yes. can, they, they can, can do, do it, it, too. Yes, they, they, they are more patient, too. Oh. I, yes. I found that out the other night at, at this lock-in I was in at uh, Northland Library. Very good. Ladies, we're going to take another short break, and we'll be back with more here on Lutherans Alive.
Welcome back, and thanks for being with us here on Lutherans Alive. We continue our conversation about the ministry and wonderful outreach of the women of the ELCA organization within our Lutheran church. Uh, Barbara Fry and Rosie Henriksen are here with us, and this has been such an important part of your life. Uh, you ladies have been involved with uh, the ministry of our, uh, our women's organization for, for so long. How has being involved uh, touched your life in, in a very personal way. How has your life been enriched and your faith journey? How has this been an important part of your faith journey? I would say when I first started going to church as an adult uh, after I got married and went and walked into a church and sat down, my husband's Baptist and I was that for three years, but I wasn't Baptist. They wanted to baptize me, and I didn't trust the minister had drowned me. <laughs> and so I went to the Lutheran church. Ironically, a friend there worked with me. I didn't know that she had gone to that church. And I remember the same day, someone coming up and asking me to come to a circle meeting of their women's organization, and I did and I haven't left. And I was involved with the previous organization, Lutheran Church Women, and then it turn, turned into Women of the ELCA and have been involved in it. To be very honest with you, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't know what life would be without the women's organization. It has enriched me, it has given me so much that I didn't know I had. It's given me a strength. It's given me courage to do things. And it seems like as long as it's the women's organization, I can do it. I have a hard time saying no. This has been told to me by a lot of people. But if it was for the women's organization, if I can do it, I'll do it. I guess that's why I'm here today, <laughs> it's because I couldn't do that. I, I can't imagine it. I can't imagine not being involved in it. There may come a day, yes, there come a day that I may be starting to say no to certain things as you get older and, you know, physical conditions and things like this. But I think as long as I can, I would be involved in it. It's made me who I am. I would never have thought of getting up in front of an organization and guiding them. Way back when, I was as shy as could be and wouldn't speak. <laughs> It was like, okay, this has all been through the women, and, you know, I figure it's the Holy Spirit working. He's been there because I couldn't do this on my own. It's been whatever, and he's given me this courage to go on and do this stuff and not think, not think twice about whatever challenge it would may, may be. Um, Jeremiah says, you know, he knows the plans he has for me, and this is what he's led me to for the past... Um, many years <laughs> that I've been involved in it. Barb, what do you say? Well, I don't know. I've been a Lutheran all my life, and um, for a time after I was married, and be well, and a little while after children, you kind of have to step back um, from doing things. Uh, I guess I never really dropped out of Sunday school for the longest time. I was always teaching Sunday school, mm -hmm. but um, yes, when, when, um, when I changed churches, I thought I went from Zion and Coriopolis to St. Paul's and Swickley because it was closer to where we lived, and I thought, I better get started with the women's group, and uh, first meeting, somebody couldn't figure out how to do something, and I said, I'll do it, and... <laughs> I like Rosie. Look where I am today. <laughs> so I just figure I somebody's pushing and pulling me uh, in this direction. I have grown. 
I used to be very shy also. Nobody believes that either. Um, since my husband passed away, I was determined to stay busy, and, um, and I have. So um, it just becomes a part of your life. And like when you miss a church on Sunday, you feel like something's wrong. Mm -hmm. So if you're not out there among the women, and uh, I just hope that the women's group can everywhere, all kinds of women's groups mm -hmm. can stick together and survive because they are having trouble. And I know the women are working and are tired and have too much, but you need the companionship of other women and you certainly need your church's women um, for strength and, and just plain fellowship. Mm -hmm. So I guess it, that's it. And it <laughs> And it's important to remind our viewers, or, or perhaps to tell them for the first time, that um, if you are a woman and if you are a member of a Lutheran church, uh, one of our Lutheran churches, you are uh, automatically yes. a member yes. of the women of the EOCA, yes. Yes. whether you know it or not. And right. so you have issued the invitation here today uh, to the women everywhere uh, to come to come yes. and see what you're all about, to come for that fellowship, to come and be involved in outreach, helping neighbors, and doing all sorts of wonderful things in the name of Christ. Ladies, thank you both for being here on the program today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Right. Thank you. And thank you for being with us here on Lutherans Alive. We know that from wherever you're watching, there's a Lutheran congregation in your neighborhood or perhaps near your neighborhood, and they would be very pleased to welcome you. Won't you come and worship with us, and won't you come and see us next time on Lutherans Alive?